What's the most difficult part of working for you? I'm never satisfied. I mean, never happy, never satisfied. I mean, I, I, I think that's hard for people, the ones that don't live it. And I think people don't like to be held accountable, um, don't like to be confronted. And I stole something from Nick when I went down there once. He had a sign that said, confront and, and demand. If you just confront somebody on the problem, you've done half the job. If you don't demand, it changes. Sometimes we overlook things rather than saying anything because we don't really want to upset the apple cart in any way. But in the long run, if you confront people when they don't do things the right way and you demand that they do it the right way, it actually creates value for them because they're learning accountability. And uh, it also helps you have a better team because everybody on the team sees that everybody's held to the same standard. So uh, that's just something that I've always sort of thought was important in team dynamics. I know we're going to embark on a schedule that is off the charts, better schedule than I've ever played. If you're not mentally tough, you're going to get swallowed. And so I pick different times in practice to actually pick on a player, see how he can handle the mental stress because I know what's coming. Come on, Nick, you're too good to do that. And then when I'm done, I'll bring him into my office and say, you got a A, a B, a C, or a D, you know? And if it's a C or a D, we got to figure out how to deal with this. If it's an A or B, you're making good progress. You no, know, we know he loved us. And he, he actually wanted, for a lot of the players, he wanted more for them than they wanted for themselves. And we'll run through a brick wall for him. So, but he would always, he held us highly accountable. But on the back end, we knew he cared about us. So we had his back as well. Magic helped in that, you know. I once asked him if I could be a pro coach. And uh, he said, hell yes. And I said, really? And he said, the great ones want to be disciplined, want to be held accountable. It's the other ones that don't. I use that every day to myself. And then trying to push people when everybody um, has gotten softer, but to do what I'm doing at the level I'm doing it, or to do what those players want to become, they all want to become pros. They just think it's a rite of passage. It's not. Balls go like this, because you're getting this thumb in there like that. My biggest fear of the transfer rule, is anybody going to learn how to fail? Because it's OK to fail. Have you ever failed? Sure. I failed a zillion times. You just name some of them. It's what kind of bad interviewer you are. You brought <laughs> up all those bad memories for me. You don't learn as much from winning as you do from losing. Because when you win, everybody's patting you on the back. And you got 100,000 friends. You know, I got 650,000 of them. That's how many living alum we have. But when you lose, you know, you come down here and you look around and there's nobody here. Media, people, whatever, hard on Tom. He's so much harder on himself than anybody else could really? be. Really? Yeah. He says, you know, he's, he's hired to be fired every single day. That's how he lives his life. You've said uh, you've mellowed uh -huh. over the years. Mm -hmm. What impact? Do you think that's it? Um, a little bit of negative one. Really? A little bit. A little uh, bit. How so? Well, because I too have to make sure I'm holding everybody accountable. What do you got to do to be successful? Self-evaluate. It's one of the hardest things there is to do. You know, you can always evaluate other people. I mean, unfortunately, the media does it a lot. And I say that with a lot of positives, but those people that weren't in the practice that day. They weren't in the film room that night. How do they know, you know? I don't try to be a brain surgeon, but everybody, you know, I don't tell those doctors what to do, but everybody tells me what to do. Well, so on the media front, you've been criticized before for yelling at players. Yeah. A number of your players actually kind of hold that as a, a badge of honor to be on the end of your wrath. I'm curious the purpose you see that serving. Well, it's... You know, people see the moment. They don't see the build. Right. He, yeah, he got me one game. I wasn't playing so good. And he, uh, he took me out the game. And uh, he said, uh, he said, yo, thank me later. He said, because this is national TV. 
and you're stinking it up. You know? <laughs> so. I think I've told every single one of my players, you know, just, you know, don't, don't take how he says things to you. Just really listen to what he's telling you, not how he's telling you. If you think that any blow-ups are over one time, then you haven't been to any of our reunions because no player would come back. They all come back. I would always say uh, my best suit is I spend time with my guys. So if you spend time with somebody and you get to know them inside and out, they get to know you inside and out. I'm Italian, you know, I can't say hello without saying probably some bad word or something, you know, just the way it works. I don't know, I've seen some of those videos. I'm like, man, you gotta worry about your blood pressure. Nah, they just laugh at it. They probably go in the locker room and laugh at me. But I have mellowed in that respect. The bottom line is you have to figure out every person's different and how you hold them accountable. But don't, as they say, um, judge a book by the cover. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. People didn't see the days when we would go in his office and sit and hang out and talk to him about not nothing about basketball. You know, it gets hard as pure as gold. You know, it's a lot of coaches, man. They 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 have players and they don't they don't genuinely care about them. We know he cared about us. You know, not only did he say it, he showed it. Way to go, Jax! Way to go, Jax! Making them all, baby. Making them all. In 2010, you talked about how everybody talks about kids changing, but what they fail to recognize is it's the parents changing too. Uh, in what ways? I have PTA meetings. I have a parent group meeting every Midnight Man has had one this year and just talk to them about the things. And so I talk to them up front and I ask them, how do you want me to handle your kid if he's, you know, got a problem? And then I say, well, it says on the ticker that John Doe is suspended because he skipped a bunch of classes. How are you going to feel about that? The moms keep their hand up that they want, they want it done. The dads kind of sheepishly bring their hand down because everybody's so worried about image now and this and that. We all went through that. Right. It's just that that, that stuff has, has changed the world. I mean, titles mean nothing anymore. And that's okay. You know, head coach, president, um, hall of fame, um, champion. Those are titles. They mean nothing. It used to be your title earned, earned you respect. I'm the head coach. I'm the principal. No, what earns respect is time spent. And I think you got to do that with every kid. You got to sell it that you're going to spend time with them. You're going to get to know them. And through that, you can tell them through your experiences, what's right and wrong. You know, people act like an 18 year man now. I struggle with that because hell till my dad died, I was still asking him what, what house I should buy. You know, um, we don't do a good enough job. We don't think experience matters anymore. Why do you have to be 36 to be the president? Because experience matters, you know, and yet in everything else, we speed the process along so fast that I don't think people respect the journey. I don't think they respect people as much as they should. And uh, I try to do that. And someone would say, well, if you grab a kid or yell at a kid, that's not respecting them. I look at it the opposite. I think discipline is the greatest form of love you can show somebody. It'd be easy for me to let the kid do what he wants. That's the easy road. But if you challenge him, the only way you can change him is to spend time with him. And you've really done him a favor.